Hi, my name is David Cage. I'm the writer and director of Fire Knife. I just thought there's a few things you should know before you get started. I'd like you to meet my friend Bob. You'll be controlling him while you're learning. Let's begin with something simple. Move toward the mark on the floor. Perfect. Now you know how to move about. You're also going to have to be able to observe your environment. To do so, you'll have direct control of the cameras. Come on, give it a try. You can also look around you and see exactly what you want to see. But you won't be just looking around you in Fahrenheit. You'll also have to interact with your environment. Go to the door. Do you see the symbol at the top of the screen? It indicates the movement you have to make to execute the action. Do it slowly to really feel your control. That's cool. Now that you know how to move about, use the cameras and interact with the environment, we can move on to more serious stuff. Fahrenheit has action sequences where your character's life will be in danger. I'd better explain this to you before you find yourself on your own. When this symbol appears at the top of the screen, it means your character is gonna have to make a physical effort. You'll see, you'll be exhausted too. Hey, not bad. Now for something a bit more difficult. You're gonna find yourself facing all kinds of dangers in Fahrenheit. You're gonna need a cool head and good reflexes if you want to survive. Let's see how it works. Okay, I see you've got the hang of it. Now we can move on to something else. You can also choose what you want to say in the dialogues in Fahrenheit. Let's give it a try. Um, what do you think of my friend Bob? Hey Bob, did you hear that? Right, I see you've got the hang of the dialogues. In Fahrenheit, you'll only have a limited amount of time to make up your mind. So you'd better think fast. Now, let's talk about your mental health. In Fahrenheit, your actions modify the psychological state of your character. Each time it changes, the symbol will appear on screen. Take care of your character, otherwise you may fall into depression, madness, or even commit suicide. Oh, I nearly forgot something important. In Fahrenheit, you'll be able to control all the main characters. Be careful. Your every action will have consequences for the story. A word of advice, think before you act. That's it, I've told you everything I know, or nearly everything. There are still lots of things to discover, but 
I'll leave you the surprise of finding them for yourself. Now it's up to you to play. And be careful, you're entering a world where anything can happen. Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history books. But one day, the world kicks you in the teeth, and you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happen to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard Destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos. What have I done? I... I didn't want... It was like a dream.
quick. I, I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here. Out of order. Knife. I've got to get rid of it. I'm bleeding. I must have cut my wrist with the knife. Both of my forearms are cut, too. Duh. It's barred up. I can't get out this way. has just been committed. I'm going to have to ask you to stay calm and wait here for the police to arrive and check your IDs. Steiner, that's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. In five years on the force, I've seen some murders. But you never really get used to death. You just learn to live with it, that's all. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else. But I clearly remember the bad feeling I got when I walked into that restaurant. 
as if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different. How's it going, McCarthy? Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. Probably a stabbing, from what I could see. Looks like it went down to the toilets. The murderer got away. Who is the victim? His name was, uh, John Winston. A regular here at the restaurant. Kate knew him. She could tell you more. Somebody saw the murder? No, nobody saw anything. Except for that weird guy who left just before we discovered the body. Any witnesses? Yeah, me. I was in the toilets at the same time the guy was. By the time I discovered the body, the suspect had already left. Is the body still there? The boys from the morgue were waiting for you to get here before moving it. Nobody's been in the toilets since we found the body. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah, Kate Morrison. I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I want to make sure she gets home okay. Kate? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. I'm in charge of the investigation here. Would you mind answering a few questions? No. Go ahead. Have you been working here long, Kate? It'll be 11 years next month. I've seen all sorts in this place. Down and outers, junkies, you name it. The till's been robbed a few times, but murder? That's a new one. John, he was such a nice guy. Can you tell me anything about the customer who left just before they discovered the body? He was just a normal guy. I, I didn't really pay any attention to him. What was he like, Kate? Do you think you could describe him for me? I only saw him for a few seconds. I guess he was about average height, fairly young. That's all I can remember. What was the man doing before the murder happened? He was there for a while. He was reading, I think. Was John here alone? Did he speak with anyone? John always came alone. We chatted a bit. The weather, his job, the usual stuff. He never talked to anybody else. Did you get the impression that John and the suspect knew each other? No. I don't think they did know each other. The man had already been here a while when John came in. They didn't talk to each other. No, I'm, I'm almost certain that John didn't know him. What happened before the murder? Did you notice anything unusual? No. It was just a night like any other. Can you tell me what you saw? There weren't that many people tonight. It's usually pretty calm during the week. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my God. You have to try to be strong, Kate. I know that this has been a shock for you, but you're the only one who can help us find the suspect. My shift was almost over. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. John got up and went to the restroom. The man must have followed him. 
When he came back out, I noticed that he hadn't paid his bill. I'm careful, because that happens a lot here, people forgetting to pay their bill. What happened next? The guy just ran off without paying. It wasn't until Martin found John's body that I realized... Did you happen to notice anything strange about the suspect's behavior before he went into the restroom? No. You, wait. Yes. I remember something. I came back at one point just to check whether he needed anything. He didn't answer me. He just stared straight ahead. It was weird. I didn't push him. I thought maybe this guy is a little crazy. God. If I had only known. Do you think that you would recognize the suspect? I'll never forget that face. Perfect. Do you think that you could come down to the station tomorrow and help us construct a likeness of the killer? Yeah. I'll do whatever you think I can to help catch him. Thank you very much for your help, Kate. I hope you find the bastard who did it. People like that just don't deserve to live. I promise you, we'll do everything in our power to find him. Go home now and try to get some sleep. Martin will make sure you get home okay. Hey, Garrett. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Hey, Carla. Hey, Carla. So, you guys find anything? We took some samples here and there. We're almost finished. We were just waiting for you before we took the body away. Okay, let's take a look. Frank, can you verify all of the calls that came through this phone tonight? You got it, Carla. Huh. Here's his fork, but where's the knife? cup of coffee and a soft drink? That's weird. He's a caffeine addict, or else he wasn't alone. A book. The Tempest by Shakespeare. If this is his, it's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. Garrett, there's a book under this table. Why don't you check it out for Prince? You got it, Carla. Well, well, the coffee's not on the bill. I've been drinking to try and stay awake. Several wounds on the left side of the chest and the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. Blood on the mop. The killer must have used it to clean up the mess. Why would he risk getting caught to do that? No trace of a struggle. Looks like the guy was taken totally by surprise.
Why is there blood here? Did you find anything? Possibly. I don't understand why there would be blood here. Maybe it belongs to the victim. Not likely. Get Garrett to analyze it. Then we'll know for sure. Man, stab some dude in the toilet? You gotta be crazy. This guy took a big risk. Anybody could have walked in here and surprised him. Bizarre. What? Well, he still has his credit card and a hundred bucks in cash on him. I guess the killer wasn't after his money. Maybe it was a revenge thing. Or a... Did you find anything, Tyler? For that, I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. Keep up the good work, Tyler. Tyler's been my partner for almost a year. He grew up with the gangs in the Bronx before he decided to join the force. Sometimes he's unpredictable, but he's a good guy. Let's go, Carla. I can't even keep my eyes open anymore. I want to take another look around. We haven't found the murder weapon. It might still be around here somewhere. 